So, I'm waiting to finish clipping counters to Throne World. Um, but after having played one thing that was very close to a Euro with uh, High Frontier, I wanted to give uh, Imperial another play. Now, this is a Euro that I really, really actually like. Uh, there aren't a lot of those, and it's got to be on a, a particular level for me to enjoy them. Um, I've looked at this game as kind of a cross between diplomacy, because obviously the map looks like dip, uh, and um, the 18xx series, because the goal of the game is to hold these bonds uh, largely. And you get credited value for how well your country has done over the course of the game, or how well countries that you hold bonds in have done. Basically, the bonds get evaluated based on the taxation that you're able to collect with the countries. And the game ends when one country hits 25, which becomes worth five bucks per, uh, per bond value. Um, you start off with cash, and you purchase investments in the countries. Whoever holds the greatest investment in the country, just like the presidents of the railways, uh, gets to control the actions of that country. Different movement choices, etc., are controlled over here on the rondelle, uh, which allows you to set a certain pace to the game. Um, the points per turn or per taxation phase are kept track of here. And individual players get bonuses for running their countries well, i.e. increasing the taxation from before. Uh, we're going to start. I haven't dealt out the money or, or uh, I'm going to use the advanced rule where you actually buy all the territories. I'm going to play a six-player game and uh, I'm going to get rocking. So the initial money and bonds have been distributed and uh, let's see what we got. Up at the top picked up control of both Italy and England, which they're not terribly capable of helping one another, except maybe against France, um, but having two countries, like having two railroads, can usually help. Likewise, the second uh, player picked up Germany and Russia. Um, again, these early pickups, you're not going to hold this very well. Um, you're not going to hold things with a four, four, four million dollar bond. Um, over here we got somebody who's just playing the investor right now. Um, but they spent a lot, actually, on Austria. Austria went first, and people, uh, bit a little high on it, I think. Um, here we got somebody with France. A little bit of income elsewhere. Uh, we got the guy who, who bit it up on Austria, and he also took a big, uh, investment in Italy. I think he was hoping to get the two of them together. They can really work together well. Uh, the Russia-Germany over here can work together well. That could doom Austria, actually. Uh, and then yet another investor who has the investor card and a lot of little stuff, heavy investment in France. Nothing's happened on the board, obviously, yet. We start off with Austria. They always start things off, and then we go clockwise around this board. Um... Normally the play order would be clockwise, but I reverse that because there's something in my brain that doesn't work that way. When I'm playing solo games, I'm going to be rotating counterclockwise, just to make things exciting. So you may see things that kind of say, hey, what's going on there? Well, that's what's going on. Uh, so we're going to start off with the Austrians. And I have to decide where to place things on the board, how deep in, um, basically whether... Big options are on the factory space, which allows me to spend some cash to get better build-ups, or maybe on the production space to be able to just throw some troops down to begin with. Um, both are options. We'll see kind of what develops. Once around the board, we see that everybody picked uh, their starting positions on the rondelle and the effects that they had. Now, these are actually reflecting my favorites. There are a couple others that are valuable. Um, so we see three countries taking factories, Russia and Germany, both controlled by the same player. Although uh, the German player doesn't hold, he doesn't hold much of German stock or bonds or whatever. So it's kind of an iffy thing about uh, taking that there. Um, the others took uh, production, throwing some troops on the board to get an early taxation round into play. Um, Austria. France and England. Um, 
Other options, the import option allows you to just buy armies to begin with, which is kind of a neat option uh, for fast expansion. I I just don't like it because I hate spending money for things. I want things to come for free, which is how most of the production happens. Uh, I probably should have done some of those. Um, and we also, sometimes people will grab the investor option in order to just grab some quick cash. The taxation option would seem to get you some victory points or something, but uh, it actually doesn't because nobody's taxation is high enough at the beginning. You have to set up to hit taxation the first time. Uh, so it takes a little effort. Okay, second time around uh, on the rondelle. Um, and we see a couple of players, uh, the Russian and the Italian, have taken the investment option. Just moved the investor card over. Um, nothing major moved here. Uh, some additional Italian bonds here. Additional Italian bonds over for the guy who owns them. Invested heavily in it. And nobody else has bought any. Um, and we also see maneuver by the people who did production. French spreading out, grabbing some territory, English grabbing territory. And someone else moved. Uh, the Austrians down here. Uh, the Germans were unable to do an investment option because there just wasn't enough cash, so they did a production. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, but we're see with, with the people who moved, we're seeing them claiming areas that will be adding to their tax value. Back around, and we see uh, those leading nations all hit the taxation spot now. All hit at the same point, getting uh, one victory point from the six tax base. Each of the owners of those countries got a buck into their personal pocket. Uh, oops, I forgot to do something. Um, we got a German investment that happened uh, that I got to take care of. Um, so that's two million dollars. I forgot, when you go buy the investor space you get money. Two million dollars goes to him. Uh, he has six. Sixes are valuable, but there's nothing you can buy for six. Um, nothing easy. He could upgrade. Yeah, he's probably going to upgrade uh, his German holdings. So yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll upgrade the German bonds up to uh, a nine, I think. Okay, mistaken. Um, there was a six buck one uh, German six million dollar uh, bond out there. So they bought that. They had exactly that amount of money. Um, it's hard to read some of these, the numbers with my poor old eyes. Uh, okay. So what have we seen maneuvering by the laggards uh, to get themselves into position with the Germans spreading throughout the North Sea area, the Italians grabbing the Mediterranean and Spain, which is kind of a dicky thing to do to France, but they're being dicky, they're the English are their uh, ally for that, for dickiness, oh, yeah. Um, Austrians cranked up their production because of that German-Russian alliance. Uh, the Russians slid into Turkey and the Black Sea and also attacked the Austrians in Romania. Um, just a matter of not having anything to do with a peace, but it is opening up the hostilities. So we should start seeing some interesting stuff happening. Um, and as people get money and the ability to swing countries, you see the alliances change based on who owns the bonds, etc. It's a really exciting mechanism. With the laggards hitting the taxation space, um, we get they've jumped into the lead. Uh, Germany in the in the top spot then Italy, then Russia. Um, but that's just the pattern. I mean, as you hit it, each time you go around, you get further and further as long as your country's doing okay. Uh, the big move we saw is with Austria and England hitting uh, the investment space. We saw England switch over uh, away from the Italian player into this guy's hands. And we're seeing uh, build up the French... Uh, increase their holding 
and the last investor remaining increased his holding in France as well. He also got some additional English points. So it doesn't look like he's really trying to up um, to grab control of anything at this point. Um, one strategy in this game is to hold a lot of money and buy things as they become valuable. Uh, that definitely is the best thing to do if you can get away with it. But the valuable things may have gone already. So it's kind of a tough call to say, should you spend your money on uh, investments that you think are going to come through? Or should you just hold on to it and buy the things that are worth buying? We're on the rondelle again, and the French paid out. Um, that created uh, enough money. Well, the $2 million for the investor chit and the chance to do so for uh, the Austrian player to buy Russia. This changes the whole balance of that whole German-Russian alliance against Austria. Now it's spun around to sort of an Austro-Russian alliance, which can only really be turned against uh, Germany. Given that both sides hold a lot of Russian shares, there's probably going to be a long-term fight over who controls Russia uh, for this. Um, elsewhere, everybody pretty much just... Uh, moved forward in terms of stabilizing. The Russians built an extra factory in St. Petersburg. Uh, that's a particularly anti-German move. Um, and we see production by the Italians and by the Germans to fill themselves out. And we see uh, England and uh, Austria moving up towards the taxation spot. The English still have to move, but the Austrians swept into the Balkans a little deeper. Um, that was actually before it was clear that Russia would be available. They can now perhaps turn in other directions.